What's up guys, I'm Hendo and today I'm showing you how to make a floating glowing orb. This is going to be a super detailed tutorial that involves wiring a switch, dyeing plastic, adding a handle, and making some little orbit details. This is more of an intermediate level build, but it's totally doable if you go slow or if you just don't include all of these components. If you want to skip ahead to certain sections, I'll have all of them listed below with timestamps. This is about a $40 to $50 build, so it's pretty cheap for how cool the effect is. Alright, let's glow for it. So this is a 40 LED string of fairy lights and it runs on three AA batteries. Also make sure it's an LED string and not a mini LED string. The mini ones look like this and aren't as bright. They're really easy to tell apart online, just make sure to look out for it. It has a flashing setting too, but I'm only going to use the solid one. I'll bypass the flash setting by using an external switch. Don't forget to peel off the label if there is one. I'm going to try two ways of arranging these lights. First, I'm wrapping the lights around the case itself. This is going to disperse the LEDs more. Just make sure that each light is pointing away from the case. This is how it looks in the clear bulb. And this is how it looks with lightweight fabric wrapped around it. As a side note, I would recommend using lightweight transparent fabric over tulle. Tool is basically just a mesh and it won't disperse the light as well as a translucent fabric will. Something like chiffon or organza will look a little bit better and it's usually cheaper than tool anyway. But if tool is all you can find at your local craft store, it's a good option too. Okay, so now I'm going to try and wrap the lights in a little sphere bundle. I am basically using clear little rubber bands to wrap five LEDs together at a time and then making this little mini ball of light. This method definitely makes a way more intense ball of light. Here's a comparison of the two methods. On the left is the tight bundle, and on the right is the lights wrapped around the case. I'm definitely going to go with the left side, which is the tight bundle. It's better to have a bright core and disperse the light with fabric. Okay, now I'm going to dye the plastic orb and the plastic tubing purple. The dyeing step isn't necessary, but I think it's worth the extra time and effort because it adds a nice layer of extra color. This is especially useful for the Orbit tubing. I'm using a purple polyester dye. It's important to use a synthetic dye like I Dye Poly because our parts are plastic. Most dye is actually for organic material like cotton, so make sure you get the right kind. I'm using a very old dye pot and some dye that I've already opened. I'm also actually wearing gloves! And that's because this stuff is pretty serious about turning things purple. You want to fill up the pot with enough water to completely submerge your items. And make sure all of the powder is fully dissolved. My stove is off because I want the water to be hot, but not so hot that it might melt the plastic. First, I'm doing a test run of the tubes using a small piece and pliers. I'm putting it in for just a second to see how it holds up to the heat. The tubes hold up pretty well, so I'm actually going to dip the whole bundle in there. The best way to set the color is to dip it into the dye and then rinse it off with cool water. Be careful since the tubes can fill with dye and spill all over the place. Now it's the same process for the bigger tubes. If the dye starts to cool off, just start the stove again, let it warm up a little bit, and then turn it back off. And now it's time to dye the orb. The orb is actually made of a thinner plastic, so I'm going to be careful and go slowly while dipping this in for the first time too. Slow and steady, keep dipping in the orb and make sure it's evenly covered. This is how it looks after one dip. I probably did this about 8 more times, rinsing with cool water in between. I also realized that it would definitely dye better if I sanded it. I'm only sanding the inside since I still want it to look shiny and smooth. Here are all of the results. The orbs in the middle are the sanded ones, which I think look a lot better. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the lights inside of the clear orb versus inside of the sanded orb. Next is the painting step to add swirls of color to the energy orb. I'm not painting the outside because I want it to be smooth and the inside will be better protected from the paint scraping off. This is just acrylic paint watered down so that it stays a little bit transparent. I'm using a few different shades of purple, blue, and black so that it looks extra swirly. Mm -hmm. 
After a quick light test, this is about as purple and diffused as I was hoping for. Now I'm going to modify the lights to have an external switch so that it's way easier for me to turn on and off. This is also going to help bypass that blinking option. If you aren't comfortable with soldering and circuits yet, you can go ahead and skip this step. You can always just turn it on the old-fashioned way of popping open the orb and turning on the battery pack. But if you do want to learn a little bit about wiring, switches are actually the easiest part of circuits. First, make sure that the pack is off so that you're not messing with a live circuit. The battery pack has two wires leading from it, I'm just going to take one and cut it. It doesn't matter which wire, either one is fine for a switch. Now I'm stripping the plastic from the wire using wire strippers. Now they're ready for a switch. You can get any little slide switch like this from an electronics store. This one's from Fry's for about $1.50. First, I'm temporarily wrapping the wires to two of the prongs from the switch. If your switch also has three prongs, just use the center one and one of the ends, and ignore the other end. Once I've tested that it works, I'm going to take it apart again. And now I'm going to install the switch into the orb and then wire the circuit back in place. I'm going to very carefully melt a small hole into the orb a little bit more at a time until the switch fits. Now I'm going to wire the circuit again and solder it in place. The black tubing is heat shrink, but you can also just use electrical tape. Do make sure that you cover your bare connections. If they cross for some reason, it can smoke and ruin your circuit. Now that the circuit is ready, I'm going to twist tie the LED bundle onto the clear case so it doesn't rattle around. This is also going to help raise the LED bundle so that it sits a little closer to the center of the orb. And I just taped it down with clear tape. Now in order for the orb to look like it's floating, I need to make a clear handle. I tried a lot of different plastic material. Clear warble is definitely not meant to hold up any kind of weight and totally failed. I also tried cutting up plastic from an acrylic display box, but it was too thick and heating it actually made the plastic shrink together smaller. Plus, it took forever to heat. I actually ended up using plastic from a display sign. I have a scroll saw that cut this easily, but you can definitely do it by hand with a box cutter or a handsaw. It's just going to take more patience. I cut a long rectangle and basically heated it up to a handle shape by wrapping it around a piece of cardboard and my hand. You have to use a heat glove. The plastic has to be really hot and it will burn your hand. Also make sure that you don't press too hard or the plastic will snap. Just keep heating and shaping with lots of patience. It's best to do it in small sections. Once you have one bend correct, let it cool, and then heat up the next part to bend that shape as well. This way it doesn't become one big melty mess. The handle wraps up and has two ends. One end goes up and folds over on the outside, and one goes up through the orb and folds on the inside. This helps keep it balanced. I carefully melted a slot into the bottom of the orb. Make sure it's not too wide or the handle will slip right through and it won't hold it up. Also, make sure it's the side with the switch. The last step is these orbit thingies. Yeah. This is for a Borderlands cosplay and Maya's orb has this neat effect. Your orb doesn't need to be this spicy, but a little pizzazz never hurt anybody. First, I arranged the tubes and plastic pieces with clear tape to hold it in place. I recommend playing with shapes and sizes before you glue it down. Now I'm ready and I'm gonna use 30 second Gorilla's super glue to hold it in place. First, score the orb and the tube. I'm using a safety pin, but pretty much anything sharp works. Then just glue and hold. Make sure that you glue one end of the tube to the bottom and one end to the top. Don't glue both ends to one side or it'll be a little bit more difficult to take the orb apart. This is extra important if you decided not to make an external switch. Now do it for the other tubes. I'm using two small tubes and one bigger one for variety. I also decided to glue down my handle for some extra strength. I'm also adding clear strips of that clear warbler that was totally useless to me. Basically little orbits of garbage. Just orbiting rubbish. Just around and around. Whoop whoop! That's it for this glowing floating power orb! This orb is actually pretty bright. It may not look like it glows very much in daylight, but it actually shows up on camera pretty well no matter what. 
and it actually appears more magenta on camera than it does in person. And you can see that the orb still opens up pretty easily. Ah. It's just kind of annoying to tuck the fabric back in. I could totally see this being used for lots of characters. People have pointed out that it would be really cool for Moira from Overwatch. The way I would do that is actually probably just with a clear ball, and instead having two light packs, one purple and one yellow, and then two switches so you could change the colors. Unless you only want to be Nega Moira, pretty much just always shooting the evil orb out, killing me as Mercy in the back line. It's fine. I'm not bitter. But whatever you use it for, I hope that this tutorial helped you up your cosplay and prop game. Thank you so much for watching. If you have ideas for what you want to see me make next, let me know in the comments. And until next time, I'm Hendo. Thanks for crafting with me. If you want to see the full cosplay that goes with this orb, you can click up here when that video is ready. You can also catch me live on Twitch to watch me make stuff like this. Yay! Help me! I'm hungry. Save me. Yay! Help me!